Hey everybody, uh, so it's been a couple of weeks since I posted anything up, uh, but I've got a couple here today that I want to speak to and uh, they are uh, from commenters that are requesting uh, videos. So again, thanks so much for providing those video requests and definitely keep them coming because always if you're thinking it, then chances are there will be other people that are watching these videos that might be interested in the same type of topic. And uh, one other thing I want to quickly say before I dive into the video is I just want to make a comment on how I'm really impressed to see in the comments there's a lot of uh, INTJs that are in, you know, um, self-proclaimed uh, older and uh, I'm really impressed to have those uh, perspectives put in um, as another piece of dialogue for other uh, individuals because it's nice to see a scope of multiple generations and uh, both sexes as opposed to just one um, one thought uh, coming from one particular uh, generation. So uh, again, great, um, but I'll get into this one. Uh, again, I always have notes. Um, this one I think is pretty uh, important right now. I find uh, it's about a request and I apologize I can I forgot to write down who was the person that requested it however it is about uh, socializing during the holidays and uh, I this again is coming from me and my personal experience and how to handle it um, so the first thing that came to my mind when I was thinking about this is uh, my god like it is Socializing during the holidays, uh, especially if you have a lot of functions to uh, work around, is incredibly challenging. So for, say, the larger uh, come-and-go type holiday parties, um, I'm just going to quickly touch on the fact that I'm a big fan of coming and taking a quick round and saying hi to everyone, say hi to the host, have a drink, maybe two, and then make an exit quietly uh, so that you've put in your uh, FaceTime, you got to have a little bit of conversation, but uh, sometimes during the holidays it is a marathon, not a sprint when it comes to all the interactions that may be required depending on your life circumstances. So for myself though, I'm going to talk more about uh, managing specifically a holiday or holiday, excuse me, function, say regarding uh, having a holiday dinner, Thanksgiving dinner. Uh, so for myself, I tend to manage it through uh, actually hosting the party itself and or the dinner. And the reason why I do this, there are quite a few. Um, the idea of hosting for some of us might be traumatic, but for myself, I find it's uh, a great way of being able to manage my uh, stress on the overload of managing an inevitable um, dinner experience with many people. So the reason why I say that is that I like to be able to stay busy so I'm able to uh, be cooking or doing things like that so I'm able to go dip in and out of uh, speaking with people and be able to slightly recharge and uh, run it at my own pace. Uh, so <laughs> For my own personal family, we do have a fair amount of neuroses. And I i mean, there's enough uh, movies out there that I know I'm not the only one that deals with this, but we have a particularly large amount. Uh, there is quite a bit, and this isn't funny, but we do have quite a bit of um, some mental illness in our family. So the good thing is that our family is quite transparent about that. Uh, the interesting thing is, is how to navigate these unique um, interactions between uh, individuals in their family dynamic. 
So for myself as an INTJ, uh, and I have spoken about the fact that I do suffer from anxiety, uh, but when I'm hosting, I'm able to have more of a control situation and be more of the observer. So what I do find, though, is that it becomes quite challenging when you're uh, in seeing these interactions between uh family members that have a unique history between the uh, each of them that is separate from yourself. It can tend to get a little bit heated. And uh, as an INTJ, that's not uh, the best um, uh, way for me to get through things because most for the most part I just want things to run smoothly. But uh, you never know what's going to come up at a holiday dinner. Uh, so speaking to that, what is kind of an interesting thing in a way that I do uh, have a coping mechanism is being able to observe people's interactions because you, for myself and others, you already know there's already dynamics in play. So to have that kind of third party observation and watching things unfold, it's kind of a curiosity Thing, and it speaks to my interest in understanding the dynamics of human interaction. So it's more of an objective um, observation than going and dealing with the subjective of these uh, folks. So uh, the other piece too is the, as a host, I like it because I am able to control somewhat of the mood. So instead of walking into a situation where I am not sure what type of temperament the host is going to be at or in, I psych myself up beforehand, making sure that I am ready mentally and uh, physically to take on the uh, challenges that come along with interacting during a holiday uh, meal. And the ability one thing that I do for controlling the mood is making sure that we set it in a positive tone so my personal way is using uh, humor a lot and making sure that we're having interesting conversations but there's still a little bit more on the light side we're not getting into too much depth on the overall conversation uh, that way we're able to somewhat control and I keep saying control and that is actually um, interesting because as an INTJ I want to have as much control in my environment as possible so leaving out uh, as many uh, unknown variables as possible um, so this also, I'll just add to the idea of keeping things light. I've spoken to this before in other videos, but the uh, idea of small talk, which we we all know we are not fans of, but when you're stuck in a situation like that, uh, being able to use the tool of, say, for myself, exa for example, I will bring up one interesting anecdote that had happened to myself somewhere and I will uh, grow that um, and build on that experience so I will tell the story in a way that actually drags it out a little bit longer it's definitely not um, making it fictitious but what I'm doing is adding more uh, pieces that make the uh, situation more that I'm speaking to more interesting then I feel that I've put in my uh, sharing without actually doing a ton of sharing and then I'm able to pass that uh, baton on to the other another individual and start asking questions about their experience and feed off of what they're really interested in talking about. So again, I've said this, I believe, before, but people love talking about themselves. So the best thing for an INTJ is passing the hot potato back to another person and letting them start talking. A lot of times I find in my family, they love talking about themselves because it seems like they haven't been able to have a chance to have dialogue with other people. So it's kind of a chance just to open Pandora's box for uh, continuing conversations with other people. Um, another thing I do to manage this is I, because I'm hosting, I invite friends. So I am lucky enough to have quite a few INTJ friends uh, and uh, I love bringing them. And the reason why is because 
we're since we're very similar as INTJs, uh, they come in and they already know the dynamic. They're excited to come every year because of the fact that they can sit back and watch what unfolds because as for us, we're wanting to uh, analyze that dynamic and see how it applies to their own personal experience in their lives, as well as uh, enjoy the show. So I'm saying this very flippantly. Um, there's a lot of stress that comes along with doing all this. Uh, but when you are in a situation where you have to have that obligation to be with uh, family and friends and by all means family and friends are important uh, when I say the obligation it is mostly because it is not a one-on-one -on -one situation so you're not as an INTJ for myself you're not functioning in the most optimal capacity uh, for your personality type so finally at the end what I love is making sure once everyone's gone that I go back into my my hole or my cave. So taking that time to truly decompress because it is, uh, like I said, a marathon and uh, having to put that much uh, extroverted energy into uh, managing a potentially four or five hour long conversation with multiple people that really have no, or that doesn't have any depth to it uh, because of the group dynamic um, you need that extra time so self-care anyways I uh, love to hear your comments as always uh, video requests just if you can put video request at the beginning uh, before it so then I am able to quickly pick it up uh, apologies for if I have been missing some video requests they are always written down uh, it's just uh, depending on timelines and what uh, I'm able to uh, put out there so anyways thanks so much for watching